Okay, hello, welcome back. Today we have a 300 TDI Turbo sitting on the bench. This basically is your branch manifold or outlet manifold. Goes into the turbo. This is where your exhaust pipe would fit. So obviously it's upside down. Here is the part which has the bearings. This particular part is where the oil returns back to the sump. This is a wastegate actuator. And this is the compressor side of the turbo, which pushes air towards the inlet manifold via the uh, intercooler. Right, so the wastegate is the most interesting part on here. This is adjustable. You have a lock screw on here. Okay, wastegate has the push rod, which pushes a lever. Under certain conditions, it will open a wastegate and release any excess pressure that's in the turbo. So basically, it maintains the pressure in the turbo at certain RPMs. If you have no air leaks in your system, in your induction system, and the actuator is opening it too early, it means you will lose power. Likewise, it will give you more pressure if it opens later. You will not, however, get more pressure at lower revs by adjusting this rod. Right, so the wastegate itself is adjustable, depending on length, will either stall or shorten the amount of time it takes the wastegate to open, and this will affect the pressure in the turbo, or the boost pressure in the turbo. Ideally, we'd want to run to manufacturer specs and have this pressuring at 3000 RPM at one bar. The wastegate is fed from a T-piece which comes off the compressor snail, that's this pipe here. You can see this one is in not very good condition and would cause a, a lack of power. This union here will go off to the injector pump boost uh, module. The booster module is here on top of the injector pump. Right, so I've stripped down the turbo here and basically the branch manifolds on the 300 TDI they have two branches which knock off. Basically, they are just a push-in fit. You possibly might need some paste to hold it in, but they just knock out with a hammer or a soft hammer. This part here, the, um, the turbine side of it, which has bearings, um, basically is clamped in, and the other side is held in by a circlip. Okay, so this is the part that will go wrong, it wears out, um, seals will leak, and also the uh, fins will get damaged if there's any debris in there. Basically, this one's actually up semi C, so it needs changing. Basically, it would warrant a, a new turbo fitted to the engine. But there is a uh, turbocharger repair kit. Okay, this is a rotary assembly which you can get from Bearmark. Okay, now this is guaranteed quality, they're just about over £100 which makes a difference from buying a new turbo completely. According to the sales bump, each of these uh, is balanced and has a serial number and has a 12 month guarantee. Link to the PDF, or this PDF, is below this video on YouTube in the description. Okay, so there are a few different types of vehicles that this uh, turbo cassette is available for, and ours is ERR4893C, the Defender 300 TDI. As you can see, it's available for quite a few different Land Rover vehicles. After testing this turbo, basically we're going to have to look at replacing the center rotary parts. Check in with the 300 TDI workshop manual. Basically, it's a Garrett T25004. Maximum boost pressure on this is between 0.93 and 1.07 bar pressure. And this is measured at the wastegate actuator T-piece. So taking these figures, basically we want a gauge that is uh, 1 to 2 bar pressure reading. Okay, and this will measure the pressure that is produced at the turbo. Um, under acceleration or constant flight. This needs to be done under load on the vehicle running at a constant speed. Land Rover test procedure basically to check the boost pressure is to drive the vehicle normally which uh, you want to find a hill constant speed with the engine revs between 2500 and 3000 revolutions per minute. At that speed you should be able to read about a bar pressure on the gauge, which this is doing. We're going up a hill, um, running actually in third gear and the revs are about 3000 RPM. This is something you have to guess unless you use a tachometer. The whole idea behind this, we're measuring it at the turbos to make sure that the wastegate, that's this thing here, is regulating the pressure 
um, to the turbo. So as the pressure increases more than it should, it will open the waste gate even momentarily just to even the pressure out. You can see I'm pushing air into the actuator here to activate the waste gate. So in the official workshop manual, basically you're going to use a pressure gauge and it's going to be teed in to one of the pipes right on the turbo. It's recommended that you tee off on this T piece here on the turbo compressor. You can see this on the engine. Basically you have the T piece joint with a pipe which goes off to the injector pump. You also need to check the condition of this plastic pipe because sometimes it will leak along with this rubber pipe. Right, so the pipe terminates at the uh, boost pressure capsule on top of the injector pump. And you can see the banjo which I'm porting to here. Right, well, um, because of the lack of good piping, I've actually used a uh, Wira T-piece and cut the pipe, tapped into it and used a uh, fitting so I can get the pipe air pressure to a gauge. Now, I've got a couple of gauges here. One's a one bar pressure. Uh, this is just about sufficient. Really, you need one that's a two bar pressure and not one that's 25. So what we have here lashed into the vehicle is a gauge that registers two bar maximum. Right, so the T-piece I'm using is in fact a T-piece with a quick fit fitting on it and the pipes are pushed into it. Pipe goes in to the uh, cab via the window. Now you can see where I've run the pipe so it doesn't get trapped under the bonnet. This way is actually recommended in the manual. Okay, so the gauge is situated and fixed so you can uh, glance at it when you're driving. Basically, make sure you pay attention to the road more than your gauge. Okay, so basically I uh, do a lot of air fitting on trucks, as you can see by the gauge that goes up to 25 bar, which is a little bit excessive. And this T-piece is quite expensive to buy. Um, from off the internet so what I suggest you do if you do have to cut into your lines is get a T-piece like this it's a six mil pipe and these are quick fit fittings they either come in steel or plastic or plastic and steel ends basically you could get one like this which is a Wira fitting and these are very good quality okay this is what you will fit after you've done your test on the pipe if you cut your piping all right so in the manifold this you can do a comparative test to see if you have the same pressure in your manifold 300 TDI you have a fitting in the back of the manifold which has a screw thread okay you can fit a fitting in there and run a pipe off there this will give you absolute manifold pressure rather than pressure that comes just off the turbo. Now you want to do a comparison test. Um, this is the 200 TDI position of a um, bolt that goes into the manifold and I've actually drilled and tapped a um, test point for my equipment which makes it just easier for myself. So basically you can test at the turbo and at the manifold to see if you have a pressure loss in the system. Right, for testing, basically you need to go on a drive and find a road where you have a hill or an incline and you can keep accelerating. The boost pressure will go up and if you keep a constant speed, you can then notice what it's holding at. Now, I'm accelerating excessively, so it's gone over one bar. Following this truck, with, I'm in uh, fourth gear. The pressure is about 0.7 of a bar. Now I'm accelerating. You can see it goes up and what we're looking for is to hold about a bar at about 3000 RPM. Problem is if you have to slow down slightly, you lose the pressure. But you have a constant drive. You can see that the pressure will sustain. Now this is the wastegate holding the pressure at a certain RPM. You can delay the wastegate from opening by lengthening the rod slightly. Shortening it will obviously shorten the time it takes before it starts to open. But you're not going to gain extra pressure at low RPM. This is only when you're in flight. Basically the aim of this test is to uh, give a good idea of what your turbos are running at. So if we have low pressures at 3000 RPM for instance, it could be because you either have a turbine fins that are not um, in square. Uh, it could be partially seized. You could have an induction blockage, i.e. your filters um, blocked, or it could be that your wastegate actuator is actually just stuck open slightly. If that happens, then basically you're going to have hardly any pressure whatsoever. There is a possibility also that the spring in the actuator 
is broken. This means that it will not take much pressure to overcome and open the wastegate earlier. If the pressure is too high then it could be because your wastegate is not opening at all and is seized in the uh, shut position. These are common faults. Good luck with your testing and let's hope you don't get stuck behind a slow bus.